Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about top dressing house plants. And I'm doing this in collaboration with Jeff from Everything Plants. He's another Canadian plant YouTuber. You guys can check him out for the other side of the story where he actually performs an experiment with a product that we're working with together on to show you guys the results of the product and how well it works over an entire month period. This guy is the house plant master. His house plant collection is much larger than mine and he's an absolute pro i give him a huge thumbs up so make sure to go check out his video i'll leave the link down below let him know that i sent you over so let's jump into the science of top dressing plants and jack is officially beating up the camera stand right now oh he's gonna be a baby he's gonna cry oh jackie oh jackie boy say hi hi so top dressing house plants, why is it beneficial and why should we do it? I am here to break the internet with a new concept that not a lot of houseplant people do. It is a common concept in the garden and it is another very common concept on large production scales and that is the concept of top dressing. This will be hugely beneficial to you and your plant journey when it comes to indoor plants. When you choose to top dress your soil, you're doing a number of different things, but the big thing is that you're feeding microbes. You're feeding your actinomyces, seedies, your fungi, your bacteria, your protozoa, your nematodes, and everything else in between. And this is a big deal because it can help with nutrient cycling all the way to water usage and even prevention of disease and potential pests such as fungus gnats, thrips, mealybugs, etc. And I'm dead serious when I say that. A healthy, live, indoor soil means a healthy, pest-free, nutrient deficiency-free plant parenthood. So let's jump into exactly why this is. When we choose to top dress, we generally use a compost or a manure. When we use a compost or a manure, we add sugars, organic material, and nutrients. Nutrients is for the most part water soluble. So as we water our pots, that nutrients will flow down through the profile towards the roots. Once it reaches the roots, it can be then taken up. The sugars and the carbs or just the organic material in general is actually decomposed by microbes and fungi and a whole host of other bugs. Those bugs turn that organic material into usable forms of nutrients. What this means is that we then have more nutrients for our plant that it can then utilize. I've been doing this for years now, mostly because I'm incredibly forgetful when it comes to using synthetic or even organic fertilizers, liquid, crystal, whatever the case is, putting it in the water and watering the plants. So I always personally go for something that's in the soil because it makes my life easier. I'm a forgetful person. Now, I typically would just fill up the rim or where it's compressed in the pot, I would fill up that rim with compost or manure. When it comes time to repotting, because I don't want to affect my mycelial web or I don't wanna expose my bacteria to excessive amounts of oxygen, I typically, when I repot, will just pull the plant out and I will not disrupt that soil. The moment you disrupt the soil, you actually disrupt your mycelial web and it can take a very long time to grow back. So I like to keep that intact. I just fill in the edges of the pot where kind of that plug is. I don't disrupt the roots. And I don't t affect or touch that main portion. However, one of the problems with the compost or the manure manure that I've realized over the years is that first of all the bags are huge so if you have a small houseplant collection or if you simply have a large houseplant collection using a five pound bag of manure is going to take a very long time to use up so there is that issue the second issue and the number one reason why I haven't talked about this on my channel is actually because it's incredibly messy <laughs> and so the reason for the messiness is actually because 
Compost and manure is generally hydrophobic. There's a few different reasons from that, ranging from the cellulose content all the way to actual mucous membranes that can be found in those mixtures. So when you water, what happens usually if you don't have it mixed with a potting soil or some sort of surfactant, you'll end up with pooling of water. You'll end up with spaces that are so hydrophobic that the water never seems to get into. And it can eventually over time affect your roots and just the nutrient transfer and a whole bunch of other problems. Also, the other thing is that if you don't mix in a perlite or something that allows airflow, you can end up with excessive amounts of mold on the surface of your pots. And not that that's a bad thing, that's a common misconception. Fungi is actually incredibly valuable to decomposing organic material, which is mostly what compost and manure is. That's why it's showing up. It's a good thing. It's just showing that your soil is alive and healthy, but it just doesn't look good. It looks like mold in your house. So I've always had that issue. And so I've never really promoted it and that is because I just didn't think it would be appealing to anyone to know about because who's going to want to see mold or have to deal with hydrophobic compost and manures on the surface of their indoor potted plants. Makes sense, right? I think it does. However, there is a company in Saskatchewan that ships to both Canada and the US and they have broken the barrier of top dressing indoor plants or just pots in general with compost and manure. And this product is awesome. It is made by Earth Medicine. I will put their Instagram down below as well as their website. If you wanna grab this, this is their um, indoor size. They also go all the way up to a five pound bag. If you wanna try this in the garden, it's an awesome alternative as well. And this runs, I think, about $15. Now, it is like little pebbles. It looks exactly like slow-release fertilizer. And it is dairy cow manure with straw. Now, Earth Medicine, the girls are probably watching this right now. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that the straw is in there mostly because manure and straw just are a package because straw is what the bedding is for these cattle. So the straw makes its way in there, but there's nothing wrong with that because straw is very high in carbon. It actually will help with your soil formation and your aggregation of your potting soil. And this is the other reason why I don't break up that root ball when I'm top dressing my indoor plants. Over time, as we add more carbon, we get more microbial activity. As the roots die off, which is normal in a plant, we'll end up with tunnels where the microbes have decomposed all that organic material. These little tunnels are essentially straws in which oxygen can get into the soil system. This means we're going to have benefits of more oxygen, not only for our roots, but for our microbes, because we want aerobic microbes, meaning microbes that enjoy oxygen. Anaerobic means no oxygen, aerobic means oxygen. So because we have these straws that allow that oxygen and air to travel through the soil system, we end up with an even greater microbe count, which means more nutrient cycling, more predators to take out the bad guys, and just overall higher usage in both water content and therefore less likelihood of root rot, etc. and so forth. So the straw add additive is the good thing. The manure is your typical manure. It has your nitrogen, your potassium, and your phosphorus, and then also has micronutrients, which is something that is not always common in organic material or organic fertilizers in crystallized or liquid form, or in synthetic fertilizers in a lot of cases as well. So it is a really uh, big buffet, I guess you could say, for not only the plants, but for the microbes themselves. The thing that sets this apart is that ball formation. Now that is done with flax seed, organic flax seed to be specific. This whole thing is OMRI certified, meaning it's completely organically produced. Now that flax seed or that linoleic um, oil on the outside, the linseed oil on the outside is what makes the ball structure. This is the capsule in which this manure straw mixture resides and therefore is a slow release into the system. 
Now, they do say that you can put this not only on the surface, but you can actually mix it into the soil itself. And then it would add, act like an ultimately uh, very slow release. And the reason I say that is because this product, I personally would only use on the surface, mostly because of that flaxseed coating on the outside and because I want nutrients and I want to feed my microbes with sugars sooner rather than later. And the number one way that that outside coating is going to break down is actually through mechanical methods. These mechanical methods could be something so simple as the water hitting the surface of it all the way to the grow lights or the sunlight breaking it down over time or the microbes that will also help break it down with just the oxygen exposure and the exposure to air. So that is why I would top dress with this. Um, it sells for a small plant to use one tablespoon per month. Medium plant, you would do two to three and then three to five for a large plant. However, I personally do not think you can overdo it with this product. Well, if you give or take a little on that, it's not going to affect anything. It's not going to cause any form of burn or anything crazy like that. Because it's in an indoor system, I'm not too worried about runoff because obviously it is not in the great outdoor environment. The ball structure is unique in the sense that it makes it a slow release manure into the system, which manure in and of itself is already a slow release but it also helps reduce that hydrophobic issue. So that issue of puddling water, the issue of fungi growth, um, of you know areas that are so hydrophobic that there's no water whatsoever, so dead spots within the soil, that whole issue is completely eliminated with this product. So I feel comfortable telling you to top dress and giving you a product that is going to get rid of the messiness of the typical way to do this in an indoor setting. Now, don't get me wrong. If you have patience and you can top dress with a bag of compost or a bag of manure, go a while, go ahead, give it a try. You'll know what I'm talking about the first time you water, you'll notice little puddles forming everywhere. And again, that is simply the hydrophobic properties of the product itself. Pro tip on this, mix in a tiny bit of actual black earth into your compost or your manure if you're doing it that way or wet the compost and manure like completely saturate it then place it on the soil and then water which will help throw it down you do not want to do this with a succulent a cacti a snake plant anything that you're letting dry out to the point that you can literally pull the whole plant out and it'll hold its formation do not top dress with those with just the um, bare manure. That's not the earth medicine style because it'll just, it will be a complete nightmare for you. So do not do that in those scenarios. You can use this with succulents, cacti or snake plants or anything else. You uh, don't water on a hugely regu regular basis and you do allow to dry out. This is a great alternative because you don't have to deal with the potential of the water pooling. I want to thank Earth Medicine so much for sending me this product. I'm very excited to try it out. I'm so happy it is a Canadian company. Um, I want you guys to experiment with this. I really truly think this will be revolutionary to your indoor gardening style. Let me know in the comments below if you top dress prior to this video with your indoor plants or if I've enticed you to try to increase your microbial communities in your soil. I promise you it is not as scary as you may think. If you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!